and the last of the three seniors, but certainly not least that we're able to interview on the on the show. Kennedy, thank you so much for taking the time time to join us today. For having me. You got it. And the first question I have is we quickly realized that you have a nickname down in Hope and they call you KO. And I want to know what the story is behind KO and, and why you got that nickname and, and why it's kind of locked on to you. Um, well, I've actually had this nickname my whole life and it's, um, stands for my first name, which is Kennedy and then my middle name, which is Olivia. And I think it kind of stuck throughout, um, not only li- my life, but my basketball career too. And I really like it as well. I think it stands for knockout because that's what you keep <laughs> doing to opponents. Um, Let's talk about your senior season and what it's been like this year, just trying to navigate all the emotions that senior year brings and all the, the last that you have to endure as senior year. Um, Yeah, it's been really fun. It's been really fun. And I think it's like also challenging sometimes when you're like, oh, this is the last time I'm going to do this. This is the last time I'm going to do that. You just got to make the most of every opportunity you have. You had one of your last on – uh, your last game, which was your last home game, you know, the last time you're able to play on that home court, it was a win to get yourselves in the districts. What was that feeling like? You had senior night already, so some of those emotions, I'm sure, were were uh, let out. But still, the last game on that court that you guys have spent so much time on, what was that like to get a win and punch a ticket to districts that night? Uh, it was really, it was really cool, you know, and it was like kind of surreal to think that that was the last time we were. Um, us three seniors were ever going to play in Barry Gym, but it was it was really um, good. Now you guys go back into districts, and we've talked to your your fellow seniors and the the hunger to to make it four in a row, and the hunger to kind of live up to what the seniors of the past have kind of built into the into this program, the standard of this program. You're starting to get closer and closer. Um, how much hunger do you guys have to really punch a, a ticket into the championship and win the fourth in a row? Uh, hunger is definitely there that's been our goal all season is to defend our titles and um i think that's definitely what our, our goal is and you know what we have to do to uh, accomplish one of the talking points with your senior teammates was the seniors of the past that have left this program and how much that that you guys have leaned on their leadership skills to teach you guys how to lead this year in a fairly young roster uh talk about that from your perspective and how much you learned from the players of the past on how to lead that has helped you so much in leading this younger team this year. Definitely learned like the past four years how to lead. And I think it's important, especially this year with our younger team to lead them and help them out. And yeah. How would you describe your leadership qualities as a player? What kind of leadership qualities do you bring to the table? I feel like I bring, I feel like I set a good example and, um, uh, I feel like as a point guard, you know, uh, like running the show on the floor, I feel like I feel like that's um, what a leader has to do. You do run the point, and that adds another layer of leadership that you have to have. You know, you have the trust of your coaching staff to be in that position. You have the trust of your teammates to be in that position. What has that done for your confidence, being trusted with a position like point guard? Um, I feel like it's definitely increased my confidence knowing that my teammates uh, trusted me to uh, be that point guard and my coaches uh, trusted me too. So I feel like being a point guard, um, it definitely it definitely has a big responsibility, but I'm up for the challenge. When you stepped into that role, what were some of the things that you kind of wanted to lock in on as skills that a point guard needs that you needed to, to kind of develop in yourself? Uh, I just feel like getting my teammates involved and not only offensively, but like to be a point guard, you also have to be able to guard a point guard. So I feel like I always um, try to emphasize on my defense as well. And this defense that you guys played in your sectional championship game was absolutely suffocating. When you see a team, I mean, Cuyahoga Falls was mentally rattled. They they couldn't get the ball in, in bounds on the baseline. When you see a team start to do that, does that really like gear up the defense and give you guys even more juice to know you you almost like you're smelling blood in the water? Yeah, definitely. It's like once once we know we have them, it, it just gives us all the more confidence to do what we know how to do and do what we know we need to do. So, yeah, for sure. Defense doesn't get a, a lot of attention from the – outside people because everyone looks at the stat sheets and everyone sees how much how many points everybody scores and offense sells tickets all that stuff but um how much of of your guys's defense do you guys take pride in 
that's our that's our uh, style of basketball right there. Defense turns into offense, and I just feel like that's that's our emphasis every day in practice. And the uh, the defense will turn into offense. So yeah. I want to know what a typical practice day looks like for you guys because you guys have really experienced coaches that have been there and done that. Uh, what a, what does a Hoban practice look like for you? Um. Well, we we do transition drills. We run over our sets and we practice our defense and yeah, just really hone in on what we what we need and what we need to do and our play our style of basketball. In the last couple of weeks, if you guys have been getting ready for this tournament run, what have been some of the main focuses in these practices of things you guys have to work on? Uh, executing on offense and on defense and uh, just playing as one um, and a team. And we talked about this young roster. Obviously, a lot of the, a lot of the girls are new to this stage when you get into districts and you get hopefully even further into regionals. What kind of advice do you give them as someone that has been there and, and obviously has won three districts in a row? You've played in Dayton and, and things like that. What kind of advice do you give the younger players that are stepping onto this stage for maybe the first time on a neutral site in districts? Uh, just to play their – just play how they know how to play and play as a team and just – do what we what we know we need to do to be able to win. We also got to talk about your coaching staff, 35 years of experience on that bench. Uh, what have they meant to you and what has it been like to be under them in your 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 career at Hoban? Um, I've definitely learned a lot from them. They've taught me hard work. They've taught me um, mental toughness and just that they've taught they've really taught me how basketball can translate into your life and like how you got to work for what you want and yeah. You talk about mental toughness. No one goes through a career, especially on the varsity floor, as much as you have without facing some kind of adversity and having to be mentally tough to get get through it. Uh, what do you think has been your biggest form of adversity that you've had to face in your career, and how did you get past it? Um, I feel like I've faced uh, a lot of adversity, you know, like running the point, just being, just knowing that I can run that position. And I feel like I've definitely gotten through that as I've grown up, grown up and matured. And so, yeah. You talk about life skills. What, uh, what kind of things did you take from basketball that you take in your everyday life as, as the life skills your coaches have taught you? Um, I've definitely learned that like, you have to, you have to work for what you want in life and that things aren't always going to be handed to you and you have to go out and get it. You have a future in basketball ahead of you after Hoban. Uh, for those of you that missed our graphic and, and missed our announcement of where you signed, why don't you tell everyone where you'll be spending the next four years after you graduate from Hoban? Um, I'll be attending Westminster College. Tighten up. I know our, our CEO, DJ Oakley, is a proud Westminster love, so he's going to love that. Um, when you were in the recruiting process, what was it about Westminster that made it the place that you wanted to be? Um, I just love the atmosphere there. Like, all the girls are truly a family, and I could see that from, like, the moment I stepped foot in that gym. And I, the coaches are just – they're just great coaches, and they really instill confidence in you, and I – I just really felt a part of a family there. Basketball is going to be a part of your life there, but also you have the uh, the student of your student athlete. Uh, what are you going to major in, and what kind of career path do you want to see yourself in after college? Um, I'm still undecided right now, but maybe sports management. Since you're undecided, what I'll ask is what kind of interests do you have? Like, What kind of things do you really like learning about? Um, are there like a, a broad sense of jobs, maybe a dream job that you have if, if you could do anything that you would like to get into? Um, I was thinking about psychology originally, but then I decided that might not be the best path for me. So now I'm thinking sports possibly. When you think about your high school career and some of the, uh, the classes that you've taken and teachers that have made an impact at Hoban, who are some names that come to mind of, of teachers that have really helped you along the way? Um, I think uh, my math teachers throughout the year have really helped me. And um, I feel like all the teachers at Hoban, honestly, are they really care about you, not only as a student, but as a person. Like, they'll ask me about basketball and my future, all that good stuff. And we've seen the community of Hoban have your back countless times. Every time we come into a home game, it seems like there's a big crowd for you guys. What does that uh, that that com community support mean to this team, and what's it like to be in a home game and see all the fans? 
I think it's really cool, you know, to know that you have the support of your community behind you. And it, it honestly, like, gives you a drive to want to go out there and, like, show the community what open basketball is. What are you going to miss the most about that community and about playing for Hoban? Um, I feel like I'm going to miss, like, the hometown fans, you know, like the the people who love Hoban and just support Hoban athletics. We've asked you about the leaders of the past and what kind of legacy they left on you. Um, next year, if we ask some of the leaders of this team what, what uh, they took away from being your teammate, what would you hope their answer would be? Uh, I hope their answer would be that I'm a good teammate and someone that they could talk to about basketball or about life. And I just hope they would think that I was a good um, role model for them. And Let's get to know you a little bit off the, off the court. Um, what are some of your hobbies outside of, outside of sports? Um, well, uh, besides basketball, I have three sisters, so I hang out with them a lot and, yeah, I'd say that's probably my main. All right, where where are you on the uh, on the the hierarchy? Are you the oldest? Are you the youngest? Are you in the middle? Where are you? Uh, I'm the youngest. Oh, the baby! So having three older sisters, what's that like to to always kind of be trying to live up to the things that they've done in their life? Uh, it's really cool. They all attended Hoven as well, so I really love when they come to the games because it's like I'm like living out their legacy at Hoven as well. And so, yeah, it's really fun. You're obviously a fierce competitor. We see that all the time. Uh, which one of your sisters do you think is the most competitive with you? Uh, I think my oldest sister, she's really competitive. And she, me and her are probably the most competitive on our family. What do you guys compete in the most? Like, what's the one, like, is it a game? Is it, is it uh, maybe basketball? What is the one thing that you guys really compete at the, the hardest? Uh, probably just, like, games and stuff. Like, she's not super athletic, but she'll give her all, so it's kind of funny. Um, what about, uh, you know, the hangouts after the game? We, we know all these local hangouts from all these teams that we cover, you know, that we've, we're used to covering locally, but you guys, kind of a new spot in Akron. Where's the favorite place to go? after a big game at Hoban? Um, we always go to Starbucks, uh, like either after, like before practice or before the boys game. So it's fun. One of our favorite things about getting into the communities is finding those hidden gems in, in a, in a, in a city or in a town where, you know, the restaurant that's a local franchise or something like that. What's the thing in, in Hoban that's like that local thing that's only in Akron or, or not found too many other places that is a night that is a cool place to be. Um, wait, you said inside of Hoban? Yeah, no, inside of the, the you know the Hoban area or the Akron area that, that you guys like to go. Um, well, there's like by Akron U, there's like a Paul Chipotle and like I don't know, all those places are always. What is your favorite uh, pregame routine on a game day? Um. Dial in and um, yeah. What about a uh, a pregame playlist? What kind of music do you listen to to get yourself psyched up for a game day? <laughs> all right. Before we let you go, I want to give you the chance to uh, shout out your support system and all the people that have been there for you throughout your career. Uh, shout out to my family. Um. They're my number one supporters and shout out to all the coaches in my career who have like impacted me and those who continue to do so. So, All right, Kennedy, thank you so much for hopping on today and, and letting us know a little bit about you and your career. We wish you the best of luck in the rest of your tournament run. And we can't wait to talk to you again real soon. Thank you.